Hi guys, Anik here. Welcome to K2M Unboxing and Reviews. Today, we're going to be unboxing something similar to something we've done already before. So today, we're going to be unboxing the 2025 M4 MacBook Air. You guys can see this. This is the completely base model of the MacBook Pro. The features of this broadly are that it has the M4 chip, the new M4. It has 16 gigs of RAM and the only upgrade is, and it has 512 uh, gigabytes of storage. And this is completely the base model of the MacBook Pro to sell. So we're gonna open this up and then talk a little bit about how it compares to the M3 MacBook Pro that we've unboxed before. So you guys see the front looks exactly the same. We're gonna go ahead from the back and just open it up then. No, the packaging was exactly the same. It comes with one of those black MagSafe connectors, you guys can see. Um, it comes with a 70 watt uh, charging brick. Then we have the box here, which should have the little manual, as well as just the paper with all the default information. And that's it, no stickers or anything. So now we can go ahead and open this up. Now here we have the MacBook Pro. This here is in midnight black. It's completely like a space gray, a little bit darker type color. The cable as well. Um, this right now is up for comparison with the M3 MacBook Air 15 inch that they sell. It has a one inch smaller display than the 15 inch MacBook. However, it is only $100 more than their maxed out spec version. So if you're trying to think about which one to buy, which one to not. Um, this one here, it has specifically more ports on the side. You have more USB-C ports, you have the HDMI port, you have the aux cable, you have better performance with the M4 chip, as well as other things. So we're gonna quickly go ahead, set this up, and run a quick user benchmark test. We're back, we're done setting up the M4 MacBook Pro. Now, essentially, what we're going to do is over here, we have the older M3 Pro MacBook Pro. The specific specs of this, it has the M3 Pro chip, it has 36 gigs of RAM. It's way more beefy compared to, well, this one. This is a base spec M4. We have Geekbench downloaded on both of them. So we're going to run both a CPU test as well as a GPU test. And then from there, we're gonna see how they compare and just how much of a difference did their base M4 make compared to a already beefed up, well, M3 Pro. So first we're gonna go ahead and run the CPU test. It should take only a couple minutes. Um, while these tests are running, just to compare the hardware, these both are, well, in the exact same color. At first, it kind of does seem as if the color's a bit different, but I think at closer look, you do realize that these are pretty much the exact same color. The outside, the exterior, everything is completely the same. They're kind of indistinguishable from each other. Um, so it's mostly just about how much do you really care about performance, whether you wanna buy, you know, a more beefed up version or just a base spec. Now, while these are running, we'll get back to you with the CPU and GPU tests. Now, we've gone ahead and ran the CPU test. And surprisingly enough, the older M3 MacBook Pro, it scores lower on both the single core and the multi-core um, processes on the benchmark. The M4, the base M4, scores higher on both the single core and the multi-core with a 3,800-ish single core range and a 15,000 multi-core. While this only has around a 14,000 multi-core and a 3,000 single core. So this one is significantly better at those smaller short-term processes from which, well, uh, process. So this would be better at um, different tasks that would require more CPU intensive. Now, let's go ahead and run the GPU test and see now, well, how that compares. And then we're gonna go ahead and talk about how both of these will stand up to current Windows models such as the Ryzen, GP, uh, Ryzen CPUs, Intel CPUs, or the NVIDIA GPUs. Now we're back with our last couple scores and pretty unsurprisingly, the M3 Pro scores significantly better on the GPU test with its OpenCL score being 45,000. Well, the M4 base model has a 38,000 OpenCL score. So simply stated, running games, you're rendering, anything like that, any processes which require many, many thousands of, millions of calculations per second, the M3 would do better. 
But is it a little biased? I would say so because, well, the GPUs in these MacBook systems have a unified memory system in which it shares the memory, the complete 36 or the 16 gigs, with well, both the CPU and the GPU. And this one here has three times the memory of the M4 here. Well, or not three, more than two times. This has 36 gigs, while this has only 16 gigs of memory. That would significantly impact the score. But the fact is that models that Apple has released now are significantly stronger than their previous high-end models. And the way they're able to do that within a year, I would say it's nothing short of amazing. Just how much more powerful this base model is than, well, this maxed out spec uh, model. What this would have costed was probably over $2,000, while this only costs around $1,500, probably $1,000 cheaper, and you're getting similar performance just with a base model. So the way this technology keeps on moving faster and faster, it's pretty amazing. So let's actually go ahead and compare it to some other models that you see on the market. So if we go ahead onto Geekbench, we can also go ahead and see scores that are similar. So now the way I'm gonna be comparing this is going to be I'm going to use one of the recent scores that will got uploaded onto Geekbench and go ahead and compare it with the MacBook here. And that score will be kind of similar. So I'm going to be comparing this to a gaming laptop. It's an Asus Tough Gaming A15. The specific specs of this laptop include a Ryzen 7 4800H. It has, well, integrated graphics. Its GPU is a 1650 Ti with a four gig memory slot. And this laptop there, it has similar performance GPU wise with around a 1650 Ti. So the performance of well this M3 GPU is similar to that of 1650. You're not gonna get 5090 performance or 5080 performance, especially in this form factor the way it is, but you will get significant performance in well rendering and a lot of these other processes that a lot of people do require. Nothing will beat, well, an actual allocated GPU with its own set of memory and everything like that. Those score up to hundreds of thousands on this, uh, on this benchmark. This one here, it's more as if it's an integrated graphics, it's not really separate, but it does score pretty well compared to 1650, which um, is pretty well. If we go to now the CPU score, we can also go ahead and compare those. Now, time to go into the CPU scores. The M3 Pro here, it scores a little bit similar, if actually it scores a little bit less compared to the brand new Ryzen 5 9600X, which is a solid six core CPU for Windows based systems. And the M3 Pro scores somewhere similar to that range, which in it itself is pretty good. Now, if we compare this, however, the M4, the M4, if we do remember, scored significantly better compared to the uh, M3. And this one actually outperforms a 5900X that we are comparing to here. Now it scores a almost a 4000 and a 1500. Now if you do go ahead onto user benchmark, you can also see that it also does fall into the top 100 range of scores because well, the performance of this is just amazing. The jump in performance from both of these, completely insane just how much Apple was able to change it up in that year. It uses the exact same hardware too, which I mean, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So it has amazing cooling. It's gonna perform really good. And from that, if you are considering to go ahead and buy a new MacBook, just do keep in mind that the performance jump you're gonna get from the MacBook Air to this is astronomical. The way we're comparing one of their top end M3 chips whilst it was the uh, MacBook Airs have the base M3 chips. Base M4 outperforms them by miles. So if you are looking for something that has significant performance, plus it has um, pretty good versatility, it's fairly small, fairly light, built extremely well. I absolutely love the keyboard. The M4 MacBook Pro might just be the move because its base model is just so powerful. You can do so much with it. You don't really have to even ask for more unless if you're going into something that specializes where you need that specific CPU power. Maybe you're going into editing where you need more GPU power. From that, you can go ahead and upgrade to maybe their Max models or their Pro models. And that would go ahead and fulfill your needs. But if you are looking to go ahead and buy any kind of MacBook, Remember to keep this in mind as an option that compares to only the top end MacBook Air. They're selling it's only $100 more with this being around, if I'm not wrong, it's $15.99 compared to the $14.99 that the Max a MacBook Air is selling for. With that, nothing more to say. There's not really much difference hardware wise, but performance wise, it's completely amazing. You guys go ahead and check out M3 Pro MacBook video out as well if you guys want to learn more. With that, thank you guys for watching this video. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And remember to hit the bell icon. Bye.